Right, good morning. So in this two-part tutorial series, we'll go through how to configure assets and their respective transaction costs in Zorro uh, for trading at DarwinX, specifically for trading at DarwinX via Zorro's MT4 bridge. Now, it, uh, I must make clear that this is not a tutorial on Zorro, how to use Zorro, install Zorro, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, and is very much meant for existing Zorro users, traders, who may be experiencing any discrepancies, issues, or difficulties, configuring their Zorro instances for uh, accurate backtesting and trading uh, via DarwinX. So we'll talk specifically about how to set up Zorro's assetsfix.csv file, which is um, stored inside your Zorro installation's history folder, uh, in order to correctly set it up for market data retrieval and for financial research for backtesting purposes. Um, the assets fix.csv file, just to go through what it looks like. Um, any existing Zorro users will know what this looks like. The file contained in your history folder uh, has the following parameters for columns, uh, namely name, which is the name of the symbol available on the broker, the price here representing the ask price of the asset, the spread, uh, the difference between the bid and ask price, roll long and roll short representing swap long and swap short, PIP, PIP cost, margin cost, leverage, lot amount, commission, and symbol. This is the general columnar structure of the assetsfix.csv file that if you're an existing Zorro user, uh, you're obviously quite familiar with. And it's important to set this uh, file up correctly in order to uh, ensure that any backtesting you do uh, is accurate and isn't using values that inflate performance in the backtest or deflate it. It could happen that you conduct a backtest that you otherwise would have seen uh, better performance on in a different environment than you did when doing exactly the same um, backtest for the exactly the same strategy uh, in Zorro. And often the case is that the parameters haven't been set up correctly for that backtesting environment to be uh, to demonstrate similar results. So we'll go through definitions of these terms first to recap on them if you're already familiar with them, and if not, to understand what each of these terms means um, and how to set them up correctly. Often the case with traders, for instance, who are trading FX via Zorro. Uh, particularly for uh, some feed from some feedback that we've received and seen on the Darwin X community forum, is that there's often a confusion between the meaning of certain terminology in uh, Zorro, the the world of Zorro, versus the world of FX as traders are already used to. So, for instance, the term "lot" in Zorro terminology implies something slightly different to the term lot, which is um, often accompanied by size. So the, the phrase lot size, as we encounter in FX, they have different uh, representations in Zorro versus uh, traditional trading platforms such as MetaTrader or any other trading platform where lot size is used. So we'll go through these definitions and define what each of them mean to better understand how exactly we need to set them up in the assetsfix.csv file. And once we're, we've gone through those definitions, then we'll go through an actual demonstration of how to, uh, an exercise on how to go about retrieving this data these parameters from Darwin X directly into your assetsfix.csv file to make sure everything's set up correctly. And if anything's missing, where to go on the Darwin X website to get that information and populate the rest of your assetsfix.csv file to make sure that it is complete and ready for any backtesting exercise. Uh, this effort goes a long way. If you set it up correctly in the beginning, then you don't have to set it up <laughs> again. And uh, the only thing you'll probably need to change is roll long and roll short going forward as those swap rates tend to change over time, depending on various criteria. But those are the practically the only two things that you'll need to change going forward. Right, so let's go through some definitions. Firstly, name and symbol imply the same thing. Um, they may differ if the, in Darwin X's case, they don't differ as the symbol name is exactly as is on the platform as well. But if you're using Zorro with other brokers, then some brokers may have prefixes and suffixes that you may need to accommodate via the name and symbol convention. So symbol is where you would add those additional uh, prefixes or suffixes, but for Darwin X, a name and symbol both are the same thing. So the symbol name as available on the trading terminal, for instance, euro dollar is represented as euro forward slash uh, dollar, 
euro forward slash USD, and it's exactly the same on uh, any MetaTrader terminal that you would get from DarwinX. The price column, as we observed in the assetsfix.csv file, represents the ask price, the last known ask price retrieved from the broker via uh, the Zorro API. And when we go through the demonstration shortly, uh, an exercise really on how to go about retrieving this data, all of this will become clear as to how this price is updated in the file. Spread is, of course, the difference between the bid and the ask prices uh, and is also recorded in the assetsfix.csv file. Bear in mind, though, that this spread should be adjusted in a way that it is deliberately on the poorer side, is deliberately pessimistic, because for backtesting in Zorro, you won't be, uh, you won't have the luxury of getting variable spread updates per price update. You will have to set the spread here to be used inside your backtesting environment in Zorro, such that you can account for it. If you happen to have updated your assetsfix.csv file at a time when, Fred's, uh, when spreads were fairly favorable, then you may be using spread values in your backtesting that uh, may increase later uh, in different market cycles, different, uh, different times of day or different market events. Uh, at, the, at this point in time, the 25th of March 2020, there is the coronavirus pandemic going around and there is um, Teen levels of volatility going on in the market, yo-yo-like behavior, so spreads are obviously varying quite a lot. So when you're in such environments, for backtesting purposes, it's good if you deliberately set your spread to something pessimistic to really put your strategy through the test. Um, roll long and roll short uh, are the daily rollover interest, also called swap. Uh, per 10,000 contracts for currencies. Now this is important to note here because uh, the swap rates that you will observe on the DarwinX website uh, are per contract, and they cannot be taken directly inserted into your assetsfix.csv file. So they have to be adjusted so that they represent the swap calculated per 10,000 units of account currency uh, in the case of FX for currencies or per contract for all other assets. We'll go through this exercise shortly when we go through a demonstration, and you'll see that uh, this part of the data retrieval is done automatically by Zorro when, Zorro when you connect to your brokerage account via Zorro, and we'll go through that shortly. PIP, as you're probably aware, is the size of one PIP of the current asset in counter currency units. So for instance, for euro dollar, that is 0 0.0001. Uh, what change in currency value represents uh, a PIP? It's the size of the PIP. Now, PIP cost is a term specific to Zorro and is required to be populated correctly in your assetsfix.csv file as well. There are certain uh, considerations here. Your account currency will uh, come into play here for the value will change depending on your account currency. So if the value of one PIP, profit or loss per lot, remember this is the Zorro lot that we'll go on to define shortly, and this is an account currency unit. So it's, it's determined by the lot size and the exchange rate of the account currency and counter currency. Now, the term lot as defined in Zorro terminology is the smallest possible order size permitted by DarwinX on this account. Uh, as regards FX, the smallest possible order size is 1,000 units of account currency or 0 0.01 um, lots or one micro lot. So when specifying this in Zorro, we have to ensure that lot amount is set to 1,000 and not to 0 0.01 as one would be used to on other trading platforms like MetaTrader. Here, lot amount represents currency units and in Zorro terminology, a lot can never be less than the number one. So you will always have at least one lot and that one lot will have a respective lot amount. That lot amount being the smallest possible value in account currency units permitted by the broker, in this case DarwinX, to be executed. Um, margin cost is another one where it is the required margin for buying one lot, remember Zorro lot, of the current asset in account currency units. And the remaining two definitions that we need to be aware of are leverage, 
100 divided by the margin required by the broker, in this case Narvinex, uh, is the definition of leverage here in Zorro terminology, how it's calculated. So therefore, if the euro dollar requires, as Darwinex at this point in time, on the last check uh, done at this very moment, on the 25th of March 2020, 3.10 uh, a.m., if the euro dollar requires 3.33%, which is the margin requirement by Darwinex right now, then the leverage calculated for this would be 30 to 1. And this is what would need to be populated in your assets fixed at CSV file. Again, fortunately, this component is handled by Zorro when you connect to the brokerage account. And we'll demonstrate this shortly as to how Zorro automatically pulls this information into uh, its log directly, uh, directory, whereby you can then copy that information over to your assets fixed at CSV file and not have to worry about it again, unless DarwinX announces a change in that variable, which is infrequent in the case of leverage. And finally, commission is expressed in Zorro configuration as round trip cost. So even though on the Normanex website, when you go to our assets and spread section, you'll find the commission is stated on a per order basis, per side, per leg. In Zorro, you have to calculate round trip cost by multiplying the per side by two and setting it accordingly in your assets fixed.csv file. And this is also in account currency units. So expected by Zorro, uh, this value is expected by Zorro as per 10,000 units, again, in the case of currencies and FX. So remember, whatever value you see as stated on the assets and spreads uh, section of the DarwinX website, it'll either be on a per contract basis or per 100,000 uh, account currency units basis. You have to transpose that value into per 10,000 units, as in if anything stated for a standard lot, you have to make sure you adjust the value to represent a mini lot in Zorro configuration when it comes to FX assets. In the case of all other assets, the value needs to be expressed on a per contract basis. So the reason this may all seem fairly complicated, there, there, it seems like there's a lot to do, but that is the case with... Um, with most things that are awesome. <laughs> uh, anything such as Zorro, which is a fantastic research as well as trading environment, there are certain features of Zorro that require effort to be put in and it's just simply put, it is simply not straightforward to just download, install, and go with a default configuration in Zorro. This work has to be put in. And if you're looking for some sort of really good introduction or sort of crash course in really getting up to speed with Zorro, then the Robot Wealth um, a course offering on this, which is, I, I believe, a course on how to go from installation through to writing your very first script in Zorro, uh, a fantastic course by the Robot Wealth guys on how to go about doing all of that introductory through to configuration through to writing your first script um, in Zorro. But uh, again, they had to design an entire course around just those introductory factors. So that alone should illustrate the fact that Zorro uh, is a fantastic research environment, but it is simply not sufficient to download, install, and carry on without putting in any effort. And that's it for definition. So we've gone through an introduction on what we're about to do in terms of configuring Zorro uh, for assets and transaction costs at DarwinX. And we've gone through some definitions that we will find are very useful when we go about actually configuring this assets fixed.csv file. The good news is that a lot of the numbers that you see in here can be retrieved automatically, as I mentioned earlier, by Zorro. And we'll go on into the next video now to do a little exercise, a little demonstration of how to go about selecting assets that we'd like to get information for, uh, and then automatically downloading most of this information into our assets fixed.csv file. There are certain things uh, that, certain considerations uh, when configuring assets fixed.csv in terms of margin and leverage. So when we're using margin cost or leverage in Zorro, in our case, we'll be sticking to just leverage. Zorro, when we conduct our demonstration shortly, will download values for leverage, download and calculate values for le leverage based on margin requirements that are available via the API from DarwinX trading terminals. So see you in the next tutorial, and we'll go through that demonstration and uh, a fairly neat 
hopefully simple exercise on how to ignore anything in your default instance once you've installed Zorro, start from scratch, decide on the assets you'd like information for, and then go from there with a clean slate. So let's go into that next video and show you how that's done. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.